Today we're gonna to be looking at how to create stylized furniture, specifically this little forest furniture set. Let's get started. This new update focuses on stylized materials. The pack is now on sale to celebrate this new update and will continue through the Blender Market Sale for 25% off. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. So first, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a cylinder and we're gonna scale that down on the Z axis. Then we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna go ahead and apply a subdivision modifier. You can do that by pressing Control-1. Then we're gonna press Control A and apply the rotation and scale. Then we'll tab into edit mode here, grab these edge loops with alt clicking, hit Control B, and we'll be able to bevel that edge really quickly. And you can see now that we're starting to already get the shape of our table. So we're gonna flip here into the top view, grab a knife tool there, and we're gonna kind of cut out a little triangle piece there with the cut through mode on. And we could go ahead and grab all those faces we just created. We'll go ahead and delete those faces, which gives us a gap. Now I'm just gonna go around and we're gonna grab these vertices and just by pressing F, we can fill and use the knife tool to kind of cut up some geometry to fix that a bit. But what this is gonna do is give us a little crack that we can work with. Perfect. Now what we can do is go ahead and we'll add another cylinder. And what we can do is we can scale this cylinder down and we're gonna use this for our table legs. So we're gonna go ahead and move this in here and we'll tap into edit mode here after we get it placed right. And we're gonna grab this bottom here. We're gonna bring this down and then kind of scale this out a bit just so that it flares up a little bit. Perfect. So I'm actually going to tab back into edit mode here and I'm gonna get rid of this top face as this is just kind of unnecessary geometry. And then I'm gonna grab this bottom edge loop here, press control B there, and just add a little bit of a bevel there just for some kind of visual interest. Now we're gonna be doing some sculpting on this. So I'm gonna go ahead, press control R and just add a bunch of edge loops right here just to give some geometry for us to work with. Great, that's looking nice on the table. So let's go ahead and add a few more details to this. If we tab in here and grab a couple faces there, we can switch to our side view there, kind of extrude out, and then we can scale that in, which will give us a little notch. And I'm just gonna go ahead, add a subdivision with control one, add another edge loop here, and then just begin kind of reshaping this notch until I get what looks like a little kind of wooden tree piece moving out of this leg, just for a little extra detail. I'm gonna go ahead and just add another one here on the back end. Feel free to keep adding these as you see fit and great yeah so I'm kind of happy with that level of detail there so switching to top view here what we're gonna go ahead and do is grab those legs and just duplicate those and kind of rotate those around and just save ourselves from having to create all the different variations of legs so this is just a quick way to kind of reuse some of our work efficiently and I'm gonna go ahead and go with a kind of a three-legged table perfect now what I'm gonna do is tab into edit mode on these and if you press O and turn on your proportional editing you can kind of grab that top piece of the leg there and then you can use the G key and R key to grab and kind of push and rotate this around. So we can just add a little bit of distortion to the legs. And this is another way to kind of quickly add a bit of variety to these three legs and not make them look as if we just duplicated them. So I'm just gonna kind of take a moment here and play with these legs until I get something that we're happy with. All right, great. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna grab the legs and the table, gonna just join those into the same mesh, convert those all to mesh, which will apply any modifiers we had to them, including the subdivision. Then once I've joined that all as one, I'm gonna name it table. I'm gonna apply one more subdivision modifier here just to get some extra geometry. And then I'm gonna to switch to sculpt mode. And you can grab this little clay brush over here. And what that'll allow us to do is just kind of move up and down with a small brush. And that'll just end up adding just kind of a bunch of kind of warbly details and lines, which will give us kind of the illusion of almost like a bark texture going across it. Perfect. So once I'm done there, what I'm gonna do is add a lattice to this. I'm using the fit lattice modifier to make that a little bit quicker. But what I'm going to do is add a lattice here, kind of bump up the divisions there, and then just start to kind of move these little lattice points around. Now there's no real signs here to exactly what will look great, but what I'm trying to do is just add a little bit of distortion so that it feels a bit more natural, warped, maybe aged or kind of handcrafted. And this will hopefully just help it from feeling kind of too sanitary and give it a little bit more character. So once you're kind of done adjusting the lattice modifier on your table, what you can do is just go ahead and grab your object, apply that lattice modifier, delete it, and then get ready to hide that object and move on to the chairs. So for the chairs, we're gonna go ahead, add a mesh, and then we're going to add another cylinder here. 
And once we have our cylinder here, we can just tab into edit mode here. And I'm gonna scale that down in edit mode just a bit and want kind of more of a stump. And I'm gonna use control R to add a bunch of divisions on the side there. And then what I'm gonna do is grab the top and bottom edge loops by alt clicking them and scale out just to flare those out a bit. You can delete the bottom and top faces. And then what you can do is grab that edge loop again and search for grid fill. And that'll just give you a bit more geometry up top. It's not perfect, but it'll be good for our uses. Great. Now what I can do is I can go ahead, grab that top edge loop, and I'm about to do this on the bottom too, and just hit Control B, add a bit of a bevel edge there, giving it just a softer edge and a little bit more detail. And go ahead, do that again on the bottom and try and match that top bevel a bit there. Perfect. Now we can do is add a subdivision modifier, give us a bunch of geometry. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do that same thing and add another knot here. You can skip this step if you want or add more. Just gonna kind of fast forward as we've already seen this process. Perfect. Now what we can do is switch back into sculpt mode. And yet again, we can grab these kind of clay strips uh, up here and then turn it into a smaller brush. And we're just gonna move up and down all along the sides. And if you've applied that subdivision modifier, you should have enough geometry to do this. If not, you can apply a second subdivision modifier as well. Perfect, so I'm just gonna kind of fast forward as we've already seen this process as I'm just going through, not doing anything special, just kind of going up and down in vertical lines, maybe messing up the edges a tiny bit. Perfect, I'm gonna grab that object and we're gonna hide that so that we can begin working on our leaf here. So we're gonna add a plane and we're gonna rotate that plane 90 degrees and tap into edit mode. This is pretty simple. We're just gonna start, take our top of our plane here, scale it up so it's the right side, and then just continually use control R to add edge loops and just scale that in and out until we kind of get the general shape of our leaf. And you can see here, just adding more edge loops as we go, perfect. And then scale in that top one, add a couple more there. I'm gonna add some center edge loops too. This will make sense in a moment. Now what we can do is we can come over to the edge and if you grab a vertice and press V, it will separate those and you can move that and we can kind of create those notches in the leaf just like that, which is what we wanna do. Now moving forward, I'm just gonna kind of continually refine my leaf using these methods. I decided to add a mirror modifier. You can skip that step if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead, keep playing with these until I get a shape that I am happy with. And again, I'm just pressing V to kind of split those vertices and just uh, move those around until I get something I want and kind of making the tip here a bit pointier by kind of rotating my vertices. Great. Now we can add a solidify modifier, which is going to give us some depth to our object and we can add a subdivision on top of that. And you can see here, it kind of warps the shape and softens some of those features. So you can tab back into edit mode here, grab some of those uh, vertices and pull them up a bit further to kind of sharpen those features until you're happy with the final look of your leaf. Now for the stem, we can go ahead, add a curve. And then if we come over here into the curve settings, we can add a bit of geometry down here to the depth of the bevel. And then we can grab this and begin scaling this in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this way down and put it into kind of the shape of the stem on our leaf. But if we hold Alt S on these, what we can actually do is scale in kind of the thickness of that curve so that we can get a more kind of natural taper there into our stem. Perfect, so I'm just gonna kind of continue here to refine this until I get something I'm happy with. Perfect, then we can tab out into object mode and we can type in convert to mesh and that'll allow us to convert that into a mesh. Now I'm gonna tab back into the leaf here. I wanna add an indent into the center. So I'm just gonna alt click that center line and scale in on the Y. And you can see how that gives us a crease. Then we can grab our stem and our leaf and join those by hitting control J. And now we'll have one single object. Then we can tab back out into object mode here. And what we can do is add another lattice. Again, I'm using the fit lattice modifier. Just gonna add some depth here. And then we're gonna start kind of distorting the shape of the leaf to get it to feel a bit more natural. Now, I want this to be the kind of back of the seat here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a bit of curve, almost like it'd be something to comfortable to lay back on. But then we also wanna give this leaf um, some curve as it kind of like tapers out from the stem. So what we can do is we can grab these side uh, points here, and then we can move this back on the Y axis, which will give our leaf overall kind of a natural curve fall off. Perfect. So you can just keep playing with this and adjusting this until you're happy. And again, when you're done, just go ahead, grab your object and apply that lattice modifier, and then go ahead and delete the lattice as we just don't want that kind of cluttering up the view. Now we can go ahead, name this leaf. 
And then we can reveal our other objects as we're gonna start kind of piecing these together. So let's go ahead and reveal our stump there. And you can see here that our leaf is a little too small. So we're gonna scale that up in a minute, but let's grab both of these, which are much bigger than our table. And we're gonna kind of scale these down and get these into position to be a chair on our table there. Okay, so perfect. Now what we can do is grab that leaf and let's just scale that leaf up. So it's much larger. We're gonna kind of rotate this and stick this to the back of our chair. And then we can actually control J or control P to parent those objects, whatever you prefer to kind of get those into one object. And just keep adjusting this until I get kind of some good proportions there, perfect. Then we can join these together or parent these together, as I said. And then what we can do is we need to move this chair kind of back over to our table here. Let me just finish kind of adjusting this just a tiny bit, perfect. All right, great, let's uh, put these together and then we'll move this over by the table. And then what we can do is we can take this object and I'm gonna rotate it a bit first. Okay, great, that's looking nice. And then what we can do is duplicate this object and then we'll just move this to the other side. Now I'm just going to use two chairs, but you can add as many chairs as you want. And with that, we kind of have our little model set up there for our furniture, perfect. Now the texturing process is actually pretty simple. Now I have a couple free texture packs that you can download. I have a sample pack for my crafty asset pack and a MoGraph pack, which includes some bark and wood shaders that you can use for this and also some plastic shaders. I just ended up using a green plastic shader on here and painting in an extra couple details. And then for the side here, I just painted in a bark texture and on the top used a wood texture. And then I painted in a couple extra lines uh, on the top to kind of give it that kind of cut center wood look. And and then from there on out, I just tossed it into a quick lighting scene and rendered it out from there. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.